everyone, my name is Sydney and today I'm going to be reading my favourite poems from Milk and Honey by Ruby Carr. Milk and Honey is a beautiful book which is filled with poems. It's sectioned off into different parts, being the hurting, the loving, the breaking, the healing. And what I loved about this book was when I read it, I was going through a breakup myself. So reading this book was really wonderful to read each section and to really be able to relate to everything that she was talking about within her poems. What I loved especially about this book was the healing aspect of the book. It really made me think towards my own healing process from that breakup, finding self-love, all these little things that I didn't know about myself. It actually really inspired me to write my own healing process on my blog. So I will leave that link down below if you want to check it out. While it was a really hard time, it was a beautiful time and it was meant to happen because I have grown so much since then that it's actually, to me, I find it really crazy how much I've grown to look at how much I've changed and to appreciate that change. So if you haven't read Milk and Honey, I really think that you should. It's a beautiful book and Rupi, her, her writing, her poems, they really speak to you in such strong ways. I was actually requested to do this video by Nij, so I hope you enjoy this video. But yeah, I'm gonna go straight into the poems that I loved from this book. This is on page 45. When my mother was pregnant with her second child, I was four. I pointed at her swollen belly, confused at how my mother had gotten so big in such little time. My father skipped me in his tree trunk arms and said, The closest thing to God on this earth is a woman's body. It's where life comes from, and to have a grown man tell me something so powerful at such a young age changed me to see the entire universe rested at my mother's feet. And this is a little illustration she has going with that poem. It's really wonderful to think about that without women, you know, how would we be here? But then obviously you need a male as well for it all to happen. The next section is called The Breaking. And this was one of my favorite sections in this entire book. My absolute favorite poem in this book was on page 84. You said, if it is meant to be, fate will bring us back together. For a second, I wonder if you are really that naive. If you really believe fate works like that. As if it lives in the sky, staring down at us. As if it has five fingers and spends its time placing us like pieces of chess. As if it is not the choices we make. Who taught you that? Tell me. Who convinced you? You've been given a heart and a mind that isn't yours to use. That your actions do not define what will become of you. I want to scream and shout, it's us, you fool. We're the only ones that can bring us back together. But instead, I sit quietly, smiling softly through quivering lips, thinking, isn't it such a tragic thing when you can see it so clearly, but the other person doesn't? This poem was the biggest thing last year for me when I was going through that period where... I fell for this person so hard. <laughs> they didn't feel that spark. They didn't want to continue being in this relationship. Which of course at the time was the hardest thing. But it was so interesting because I could picture us being perfectly happy together. People said that we were perfect for each other. People said that we're both so similar in being kind and loving. I really agreed with that. And I really could see us being something unbelievably wonderful. So this poem just ran true to me in the most amazing way. The fact that she said, when you can see it so clearly, but they can't, that line resonated with me for days. 
The next poem that I really liked is on the next page. Don't mistake salt for sugar. If he wants to be with you, he will. It's that simple. This is on page 96. You mustn't have to make them want you, they must want you themselves. You can't change who you are. Don't ever apologize for the person you are. Never. Coming out of a relationship or whatever situation you are in where you lose a friend or a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever situation you have been in or are in currently, never ever think that it was your fault. Never ever go into that territory because it is not your fault. These things happen for a reason and they are lessons that teach you. Life is about learning. It's really interesting when I give kind of advice, it's obviously for you guys, but it's also for myself because when I have been through situations in the past that were difficult, I didn't know how to tell myself that it would be okay. I straight away went to that headspace of, oh my god, what did I do? It was all my fault. Oh my god, I should have done this differently. But you can't change time as well. So there's no point saying those things to yourself. They've happened and you can't change it. You're still here. You're still breathing. You're still alive. You still have so much time to explore, to find someone new, to dive into things that will continue to egg on your passions. You are not alone and you are here to strive. Enter this positive world and be grateful, be happy, love everything around you and love yourself. This is on page 103. When you are broken and he has left you, do not question whether you were enough. The problem was you were so enough he was not able to carry it. And this is exactly what I was saying before. This is also beautiful on page 109. I don't know what living a balanced life feels like. When I am sad, I don't cry, I pour. When I am happy, I don't smile, I glow. When I am angry, I don't yell, I burn. The good thing about feeling in extremes is when I love, I give them wings. But perhaps that isn't such a good thing because they always tend to leave and you should see me when my heart is broken. I don't grieve, I shatter. Too relatable, too relatable. This is another poem that was one of my favorites on page 117. I will not have you build me into your life when what I want is to build a life with you. The difference. This is on page 132. I am confident I am over you. So much that some mornings I wake up with a smile on my face and my hands pressed together, thanking the universe for pulling you out of me. Thank God I cried. Thank God you left. I would not be the empire I am today if you had stayed. But then, there are some nights I imagine what I might do if you showed up. How if you walked into the room this very second, every awful thing you've ever done would be tossed out the closest window and all the love would rise up again. It would pour through my eyes as if it never really left in the first place. As if it's been practicing how to stay silent so long only so it could be this loud on your arrival. Can someone explain that? How even when the love leaves, it doesn't leave. How even when I am so past you, I am so helplessly brought back to you. It really made me think, but what if he came back now? What if he came back in a couple more months? Would I take him back? Would everything just be resolved like that? And it's important to really dive into yourself and not make yourself go through that hurt again. Being in a relationship, being with someone is all about trust. And if someone breaks your trust once, they are not worth it. This is on page 143 and I just loved everything about this. The way they leave tells you everything. So we're going to go into the last section, which is called the healing. And this was another section that I absolutely loved. The hurting and the healing, my two favorite sections in this book. This was on page 151. Accept that you deserve more than painful love. 
Life is moving. The healthiest thing for your heart is to move with it. So beautiful. Oh, this one on page 164, I wrote in my notes, ultimate ass whooping bad ass poem. It's pretty bad, so I'm gonna read it to you. You tell me I am not like most girls and learn to kiss me with your eyes closed. Something about the phrase, something about how I have to be unlike the women I call sisters in order to be wanted makes me want to spit your tongue out like I am supposed to be proud you picked me as if I should be relieved you think I am better than them. This is my last favourite in the book which is on page 185. The world gives you so much pain, and here you are making gold out of it. There is nothing purer than that. And this is something I absolutely love. There's something about what we're able to create from the things that happen to us, whether good or bad. Yeah, those are my favourite poems from Milk and Honey. If you've read this book, I'd love to hear your thoughts or feel free to give me the page numbers of what your favourite um, poems were from the book because I'd love to check them out. I'll see you next time, as usual. Bye!